All right, so in this section, this is the second half, the last half of chapter four. We're going to do quite a bit of math in this section. But to me, this is really fun math, okay? Yeah. Because for you all, uh, uh, any of you that's going to go into the restaurant industry, you can apply this to really anything. Because um, essentially what we're doing is we're going to be looking at what of our inventory, what of our products are performing high, and which ones are performing low. Okay, which ones are really popular and which ones are not very popular. And this is going to help us engineer to where our menu is the most efficient and the most effective to make us the money that we need to. Okay, so it's very, very applicable. Flip over to the second page. You have a blank square. Okay. Do a blank square. Now I have filled the square out. We're gonna we're gonna fill it out step by step. I'm gonna talk about this as we fill this out. Okay. So the first thing I want you to write on this square is the word high and low, and low and high. So high and low along the side, high at the top, low at the bottom, and then on the bottom, low on the left and high on the right. Okay. When you're done, just put your pencils down so I know that you're finished. <laughs> All right, the next thing I want you to write is the word popularity on the side and contribution margin along the bottom. If you need to turn your paper sideways and write popularity this way, that's fine. If you need to, that's okay. Popularity and contribution margin. What does the word popularity mean? How often it gets ordered. Good. How often people order that, that particular item. Okay. And it either has high popularity or it has low popularity. And we're going to discuss how we determine what is high and what is low today. Okay. Contribution margin. What is the root word of contribution? Contribute. Okay. So contribute is that root word of contribution. So what contribution margin is, essentially, is what we sell it for, our selling price. You don't, don't write this down. Selling minus the cost. Okay? So what we, what we spend to make it, subtract that from what we sell, and what's left over is what contributes towards our profit. Okay? It's not our whole profit, because don't forget, this is just food cost. We haven't taken into account labor cost or anything like that, okay? With our contribution margin. The next thing I want you to do is fill in all the squares. So we have plow horse, the top left, star on the top right, dog on the bottom left, puzzle on the bottom right. So through our process today, we're going to look at two things. What's one of them? Two categories. Popularity and contribution margin. Those two things, we're going to determine what on our menu is high or low in each of those categories. Okay? And if something is high popularity and it's high contribution margin, so check this out. High popularity, high contribution margin. We have a star. Yay. People love it, and it makes us a lot of money. Okay? If it's low popularity and low contribution margin, it's a dog. Nobody likes it. It doesn't make us a lot of money. If you're a dog person, don't judge me. I didn't name it, okay? If you're a cat person, you're probably smiling right now. You're like, yeah, that's right. Dogs are on the bottom. Whatever. No. Dogs are our low popularity. What's that? Yeah, cats aren't even on there. Dogs are our, our low popularity and they're low contribution margin, okay? The other two are kind of confusing. So our plow horse, actually let's do it the other way first. Low popularity, but makes us a lot of money, high contribution margin is our puzzle. So the way that I remember that is I'm confused, I'm puzzled, why people don't like it. Obviously, it makes us a lot of money, 
So I'm confused as to why people don't like it. It might be too expensive. It might be that people don't know about it yet. Maybe a new menu item. There's all different kind of factors. And so then once you have those three done, then the last one is easy because you just fill in the blank of plow horse. So essentially what plow horse means is it's very popular. People like it, but it doesn't make us a lot of money. Okay. So it's just chugging along. It's just doing its job. People are ordering it. It's not that it doesn't make us a lot of money. It just makes it just makes less than the average. Okay, so it could make us decent money. It's just in this case, it's less than the average. So now let's talk about how we can get these two different high and low categories. So flip your page back to the front page, and we're going to talk first about popularity. First about popularity. So number one. Um, Alexa, read number one for me, please. Okay, so our popularity index is essentially a percentage. What is the universal symbol or universal formula for percent? Part over the whole. Yes, thank you, Shawan. Part over the whole. So in this, so if you know that percent equals part over the whole, can you plug these two numbers into an equation? Which one's the whole? 320 is what we serve, and what's the part? 64, so what is our popularity percentage for steaks for that night? 64 divided by 320. Times 100. 20%, exactly. So we take our 64 stakes, divided by our 320 total, total, and we get 20%. That means 20% of our items that we sold that night were stakes. Okay? So if we look right over here at this chart that's up on the up on the board. Our total number served was 4,845 total entrees, okay? And we can look at how popular something was based on the percentage. So what is the most popular item up on the board? Cheeseburger. Our cheeseburger, it is right there at 28.4%, okay? 28.4%. Now, how do we determine what is high popularity and what is low popularity? Okay, so we can we could divide our percentages and like the top ones are high, the bottom ones are low. We could do that, but we're not going to. Okay, so let's look at not quite by the number of soul. We're we're I'll I'll tell you that in just one moment. Okay, so let's do real quick number two. 25 chicken entrees, the popular index if we sold 75 total, what is our popularity? 33.3%, that's one third. 25 divided by 75 is 33.3%, okay? So our steps to calculate popularity index, number one, write this down. Add up all the items served. Number one, add up all the items served. Number two is 33.3%. The steps to calculate popularity index, write the words, add up all the items served. Number two, divide each individual item's number by the total served. Okay, divide each individual item's number by the total number served. That's number two in how we calculate popularity percentage. Of course, divide the individual item's number by the total item served. That will give us our percentage for every single item. So let's use the example that's right below you on the 
sort of, sort of, okay? So if we add up all these items, go ahead and add them all up. You have your chart right there, chicken sandwich, hamburger, crab cakes, chili cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger, BLT, corn dogs, veggie burger. Add up how much we served and write that number right underneath. And you can check your work based on what the number that's up on the board. Okay. So we have how many total items served? 500. Check this out right here. 500. Okay. We served 500 items. Now... We're going to divide each item by 500. <coughs> so what I would recommend you do is write divided by 500 next to every single one of these numbers. Until you get the hang of it, write this down so that way you can just simply go back and do the math one by one rather than going back and forth. So in the interest of time, go ahead. Have you all calculated at least the first two or three? So check your work up here at the top, up at the front. So check your work. Now this one, I did it very simply to make sure everything ended as a whole number. But you can have at least how many decimal places? Two. One. One, one in this case. You can have one decimal place. Okay, you could possibly do two, um, but go ahead and like focus on one for right now, okay? How we can check our work to make sure we're on the right track? We can add up all these percentages and they should equal close to 100%. That's how we check our work. Okay. If we're at 80% when we added up all our percentages, then we've done something wrong. If we're at 150% when we add up all of our percentages, we've done something wrong. If you're at 99.9, .9, you're okay. Okay? This one's easy because everything ends with 0.0. It's all the whole numbers. It's not always going to be so nice and neat like that. So now, we have our percentages. Let's figure out how we calculate or how we determine what is high popularity, what is low popularity. Shawan, will you read that sentence right underneath that says to be considered popular? Okay, so 65% of the average sales. So here's how we calculate this. Bless you. Right below that, what we see where it says popularity benchmark. This benchmark is what we're comparing everything else to to make sure whether it's high or low. Okay, that's our benchmark. That's our comparison number. So how we figure that out, what's the first step? Um, Alex, what's the first step in popularity benchmark? Okay, so our average popularity is taking our 100%. And we divide by the total number of items we have on the menu. That's how we found an average, right? You add everything up, divide by the number you have. So if one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we have eight items. 100% divided by eight is 12.5%. That's our average percentage. That means everything is sold the same. Well, if everything's sold the same, can we really say that it's popular or not popular? So what we do is, in this case, we're looking at 65% of the average. And where did I get 65%? I made it up. Okay? You, as a menu engineer, get to say what that number is. Now, you, of course, you can't say that it's 5% of the average, because that's not very popular. So to be considered very popular, you want to make sure that it's either somewhere between 65 to 100 percent, okay, to make sure whether it's high or low. So in this case, I chose 65. So step number two is 
multiply the popularity achievement per, or multiply by the popularity achievement percentage. That's that achievement of 65. So now we multiply 12.5 times 0.65 at 65%. And what do we get? Hannah, what did, what did you get? Um, 8.125. 8.125, do we all agree? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that 8.1%. Is that 12.5%? Yep, 12.5%. So let's go ahead and make this 8.1%. That is our benchmark. That's what we're going to determine, whether it's high or low popularity, okay? So that's our number. So is 15 higher or lower than 8.1? Higher. So write a little H right next to it. Is 17 higher or lower? 8? No, it's lower because 8 compared to 8.1, 8 is lower. You see how close that is? Yeah. It can be really super close. What about 14? 20? 16? 4? 6? Okay. This is half of our puzzle. Okay, this is half of our big picture. That's just the popularity side. What's next? Contribution margin. Contribution margin is so much easier than popularity. Okay, so keep this in mind right here for popularity. Let's move on. Oop, I just did this. Okay, what was it? High, high, low, high, 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 low, low. Okay, so the next is contribution margin. Now I've broken this up into two different, you don't have this broken up. You have it just all together in one little table. So the first step to calculate contribution margin, what's the first step, um, Samantha? Cost out our recipe. Have we done that before in the past? We've talked about it, we haven't done it yet. Well, we did the tacos, we did the cupcake. Okay, we cost out our recipe. Then number two, Divide the total recipe cost by the number of servings to identify the cost per serving. That's how much it costs us per serving. And then the number three is we subtract that cost from our menu price. Okay? So if you look, the chicken sandwich is $9.95. How much does it cost us to make it, Sin? $3.50. So our contribution margin is $6.45. You see how that works? Okay? Now, I have already given you the cost for the recipes. That includes the bun, the mayonnaise, the chicken, the lettuce, the tomato, whatever, the pickles. I've given you all that at $3.50. We sell it for $9.95. So now our contribution margin is $6.45. Okay? No, not yet. So your contribution margin, number three, Step number three is what we're doing in this table right here. You see how you have menu price minus recipe cost? Gives our contribution margin. So go ahead and calculate your contribution margin for the, oh, the ones that have holes in them, okay? So that's the hamburger, the crab cakes, the chili cheeseburger, and the corn dogs. Go ahead and calculate those contribution margins. You do the menu price minus the recipe cost. When you are done, check your work up on the board. I made a mistake. I forgot, I put the number sold instead of menu price recipe cost, but at least the contribution margin numbers are there. So you can check your work.
All right. If you've done three or four of them and you're getting the hang of it, go ahead and look up and follow and just copy the, re the rest of the numbers in just for the interest of time. And then you can go back and listen to the video to get more feedback if you need to, okay? So now, how do we find an average of something? Add it all up and we divide it by the number we have, okay? So if you look, go ahead and add up all these contribution margins and divide by what? Eight, because we have eight menu items, okay? That's our average contribution margin. So if you were to add up all of these, you should get $44.10. We divide that number by our eight menu items. Our average contribution margin is $5.51. We see how that works. So we added up all of these, get our total. Divide by the number of menu items. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and we get an average contribution margin of 551, okay? Now, we compare everything to that. So, is 645 higher or lower? Higher, 475? 420? 6? 6? 475? 570? And 625, okay? So now we have both pieces of our puzzle. We have our contribution margin and we have our popularity. So let's put it all together now. Okay, so, um, Caitlin, will you do me a favor and read off the popularity percentages, the highs and lows for popularity percentage for me, Caitlin? It's on the front. It should be on the front page. The high, low, for, like start with high uh, chicken sandwich. Is that high or low popularity? It's high. Okay, the next one? High. High. Low. Low. High. 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 Low. 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 Okay. Um, Jenna, give me the contribution margins, please. Starting with chicken sandwich. Um, high. Okay. Low. Okay. Low. Okay. High. Okay. High. Okay. Low. Okay. High. Okay. High. Perfect. We have both pieces of our puzzle. This is how I recommend that you read this, this information. Okay. What are the two easiest categories to identify? The high, the high, high and the low, the low, low, right? The stars and the dogs. So on your, on your back page here that has your square, Let's write the name of the menu item in the square that it belongs. So let's start with our high highs since that's our first one, okay? So write chicken sandwich in the, in the square that says star on it. On your little square, write chicken sandwich in that star category, okay? And I cross that off the list to make sure that I've already taken care of it. And then now that I have high high in my mind, let me only look for high highs. I don't want to go individual item by individual item. I want to fi figure out category by category. So high, high. What's the next high, high? Chili, Chili cheeseburger. cheeseburger. Write that down in there. The next one? Bacon cheeseburger. Bacon cheeseburger. Any more high highs? Nope. No. So now we're done. What's the next easiest one to identify? The low, low. The, low, low, the dogs. Okay. Which one is the low, low? Crab cakes. Our crab cakes. Of course they are. Okay. It's our dog, low, low. Any other dogs? Nope. No. Now, here we go. This is where it gets a little confusing, okay? Start with the one that's closest to the top. We have high, low, right? So high popularity, remember? High popularity, low contribution margin, what do we have? 
That's the plow horse. Okay. So we have star. Let's, uh, I, didn't, I didn't write these down. Star, 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 dog. Now we have plow horse. I have plow horse in my mind right now. I can see the pattern. High, low. So let me look for any other high lows. Are they there? The BLT is our plow horse. Good. And then the last one, by default, is all of our puzzles. Okay? So you see, I didn't go item by item. I did category by category. And that's going to help you as you're identifying the different categories, okay? Especially when you get to the puzzles and the plow horses, okay? Um, questions, comments, concerns about this? So our star performers are chicken sandwich, chili cheeseburger, and bacon cheeseburger. Our dog, do we automatically kick our dog to the curve? No. No. Why not? In this case, what's unique about that item? It's the only seafood option. So if we go into our Lent period and we don't have a fish and chips on our menu and people want to eat seafood and fish, that's their only option. So just because, it may be that we only have that on our menu during Lent, okay? Maybe this is a time where Lent isn't happening. Um, and so it's a dog right now, but maybe during the season of Lent where people are eating a lot more seafood, then it actually might change categories. So we do our menu analysis, analysis on a regular basis. It's not just one and done, okay? We have to continually do it. Um, Okay, so let me do this again real quick. Our stars were our chicken, chili cheeseburger, and bacon. bacon cheeseburger. Our dogs were our crab cakes. Our puzzles were corn dogs and veggie burgers. Corn dogs and what, sorry? Veggie, veggie burger. Veggie burger, okay. The plow horse is hamburger. Hamburger is the plow horse. And the BLT. And the BLT, okay. Now, here we go. Let's look at these real quick. So remember, our, our plow horses, they don't make us a lot of money, but they're really popular. So people like them. So what can I do to try to make them, make them give us more money? We could increase our selling price, and that's going to change our contribution margin, right? Maybe we might be able to substitute some lower cost ingredients. Maybe our BLT has eight slices of bacon on it. Maybe we can get away with six slices of bacon. That would So we could lower the cost and charge the same, or we could increase the selling price and keep the cost the same. Do in-house bacon okay. and then raise the price. Call it in, do it in-house bacon and make it more of a specialty item and raise the price? Absolutely. Now, you'll see in another example later on <laughs> next week, that as we start messing with our contribution margins, in this case it was 551, right? 451. What was it? 551? In this case it was 551, but if we start changing things, that contribution margin average is going to start changing too. So we're going to see some changes in categories if we did that. Okay. <laughs> what about our corn dogs and veggie burgers? They make us a lot of money, but they're not super popular. People don't, a lot of, not a lot of people order them. Do I just get rid of them? No. 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 Kids, kids, kids are going to eat corn dogs and veggie burgers. It's the only vegetarian, only vegetarian option. Okay? And so we can't just because, oh, I hate veggie burgers. I'm not going to sell veggie burgers. Your guests are not always going to eat what you want to eat. Okay? It's not about you. It's about your guests and what's going to bring you money. Okay? And so these veggie burgers, you might change the recipe. And or maybe people just don't even know you have veggie burgers. And so maybe your staff can come and talk to, maybe your servers can go to the guests and say, have you tried our new Southwest black bean burger? Right? That sounds better than, hey, do you want to try our veggie burger? Mm. Southwest black bean burger sounds a little bit more enticing than a veggie burger. And so you might even put a table tent, a little advertisement that you have these items and they might, the next time you analyze your menu, they may creep their way up to be a star, okay? You could also attract your attention. Of course, 
These make us a lot of money. Have y'all ever seen that little like star in a menu? It's like guest favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it really a guest favorite? No, they're just trying to get you to buy it. They're just getting trying to you to buy it. Yep. So that might be just the fact that we want to, if we want to increase our sales on this particular item, we might put something like, you know, by the BLT. Now, a BLT, are we going to kick it off our menu because it's not performing so well? No, it's popular. It's popular, but it still doesn't bring us a lot of money, but below the, it's below the average. What was our what was our contribution margin for the BLT? 475 compared to 550. So we're off by like 75 cents, right? From the average. So we're not too far off from the average. But really, what's the only different ingredient in a BLT than a hamburger? Okay, so we don't have a meat patty and the bun, right? A BLT has to be served on Texas toast. There's no there's no if, ands, or buts about that. It has to be done. That's what makes it a BLT, is the Texas toast. So is it unrealistic for me to keep one or two loaves of Texas toast? I mean, it's super popular. It's not making me a lot of money, but I can just keep the loaves of Texas toast and then just take the bacon from the bacon cheeseburger. I'm already going to make bacon for bacon you cheeseburgers. Already I already have all the lettuce and the tomatoes and the mayonnaise. So what's that one ingredient? So just because something is not a star does not mean you automatically kick it off your menu. You may change the placement of your menu. When you open a menu and it's a, a fold menu like this, the, your eye naturally goes to the top right. Okay, if it's a trifold menu where like you open it up and the, the top center is where your, your eye primarily goes first. So menu engineering says, put your popular items right there, okay? Questions, comments, concerns about that? So if we're gonna make a, if we're gonna make adjustments, if we're gonna make modifications, we have to decide: is the menu the problem, or is the problem operational? Do people just not know about it? So maybe we can get our servers to start recommending those those items that are not very popular, or is it really just the menu? People just do not like the menu. Okay. Now as we make changes. Depending on where you are, I know Chili's, you know, very corporate restaurant, they're going to have select markets where they're going to test items first. And then they go to another test beyond that. And then they go to a table tent test. So that's just a special on the table tent. And if it performs well there, then eventually it gets added back to the menu. I was talking to my, the general manager for the Chili's downtown. She came to talk to one of my classes last semester, and she was saying, I think they have 100 items on their menu. And so if they bring in a new item, they've got to get rid of an item. So they have to figure out that whatever item they're bringing on needs to perform at or higher than the item that they're removing from their menu. Um, Hard Rock Cafe here in San Antonio is a test kitchen for the Hard Rock Cafe chain. Oh, wow. Did you know that every single Hard Rock Cafe in the entire world serves the exact same menu? It does not matter which country you're in, they serve the exact same menu. The only difference is they have one burger different. And they get to change they get to change that burger and play with the regions, the flavors of the region. That's their local legendary burger. But every other hard rock cafe has the exact same menu. And so oftentimes they will go to different test kitchens, different markets that are popular, like San Antonio is really busy because it's on the river walk. And they'll test different recipes, they'll change them, they'll alter them before they do a completely co uh, company-wide rollout. So if you're a local mom and pop shop, you may not have that flexibility of doing a massive menu rollout, but you can do a special. You can see how that special performs, if people like it, if they don't like it. If it's a special, people you might give you better feedback of how the flavor was. Was it priced? Was it priced appropriate? Was it worth it? You can even do little guest satisfaction surveys afterwards to see before you actually.